lots of times when you have something new, the scariest thing is like, <laughs> did I even try this thing or did I even touch it, okay? This thing is something that we put out there and people push on it all the time. We had this guy in Texas and uh, he was literally like a bull in the, t in the china shop, okay? Um, we went down to Texas and we're training him and he's like, oh yeah, watch this, I learned how to do this. And like, once again, I was like, oh my goodness. Like, I was behind him just, I, I kind of said this, but I literally, I turn red if I get embarrassed. I bet you I was as white as that paper right there. I was like, oh my goodness, we're gonna have to close that door. Oh, we're gonna have to close that door. <laughs> but uh, please, uh, what we do is please just push on. I, I would rather you try and screw up rather than like, I don't know what to do. Most of this, it's data. So what, what we do is if it's data, we can build it up and we can pay, take it back down. There are only certain times where that doesn't work, but often it's just data. It's just a piece of information. And we can then form it, and we can do all sorts of different things. So please don't be afraid to kind of make some bold moves and be aggressive. I would actually recommend it. Good, uh, what let's do right now, uh, kind of, that's kind of by way of introductions, uh, I would like to get from you, kind of one, what your Atlas experience is and also what you want to get out of this class, okay? And I realize some of you are like, why aren't we jumping right into Atlas? But this is actually a huge portion of what we want to do and what we want to help you guys do is get comfortable, get knowing, and then help me know how we can help you throughout this class, okay? So uh, let's actually do in reverse order. Are you okay, Ethan, to kind of start? Sure. Um, literally no experience. I've got uh, two team members. I put together a quick little team to sort of learn this because that's their background. Uh, I say I'm phobic of this stuff. But I'm here to learn the basics. But what I'm here to do is to learn enough to know how should this be packaged and presented to United, this country in a okay. way that's easy for them to sure. understand and easy for people to want to grab on and not get intimidated. Sure, this is a big, it's a big new name. They're used to old names like Peachtree. How do we package this? That's all I want to know enough to know how to package this. Okay, great, great. What you literally have here is, is we can say we do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. This is a tool set and you can use it how you want, okay? The instructions on the hammer doesn't say, do not use against walls, do not use against, it's basically like, here's a stick with a big old thing on the end, and you can use it, okay? Atlas is literally a tool, just like a spreadsheet, just like a, a word processor. You can type, you can create a presentation, you can do a bunch of things. Those are just tools, and what we do is we're gonna then kind of teach you and kind of let you know how to use these tools. But literally, it is a bunch of tools and how you use them will depend on you. There, there is not a magic formula, okay? It's not like, oh, we only cater to bowling pro shops or, <laughs> you know, whatever it might be. It's like, what do you sell? Do you sell things? Do you want to track things? We track data, okay? And data to people means tons of different things. It really does, okay? To some people, like for instance, accounting, it's numbers. What's my assets? What are my liabilities? What's my equity? What's my receivables? What's my accounts payable? That's data to them. To an operations guy, where's my widgets? <laughs> how much do I have in that thing? I want to know how much I'm going to make when I sell it, okay? Data is so specific. That is, is a core piece. And what we do is we track data. And then the other cool thing is, is we say, cool, as long as we're tracking data, why don't we run it through a known called time, okay? We track data over time. And then that's actually the tools of Atlas and then we have a number of ways that we can do that. But that's, in a nutshell, that's kind of, we track data over time. And that's what we kind of do. Uh, Steve, what are you trying to get out of this course? What I would like to get out of the course is what the, um, what the future holds as one, but then also how we can best, you know, discover new methods of helping our clients. And, you know, that's always been you know, pretty much what, where I've came into the picture is, you know, what can we do to try to help the clients actually perform their operations and their accounting duties better, faster, you know, more, um, with more freedom, I guess I would say, you know, hence us being, you know, online. Sure, sure. Great, great. I think that's perfect. Uh, I 
am excited to kind of help show even some of the future and some of the vision of where we're planning and going with this. What we literally do, kind of like I said, it's like a headlights thing. We can we know that there's things coming. If we have a map and we're like, okay, if we're heading to California, at some point I have to go through St. George and Vegas and on out over to, you know, whatever. You know some things are coming, so you're like, ooh, let's get ready for that. This will be fun, okay? And we're going to enjoy the journey along the way, and we're going to have some fun. Chris, what would you like to kind of get out of the class? Oh, just, to, I'm here to see what, again, what the future holds. Sure. And my big one is, even though I have an accounting background, I've worked in a lot of various industries, and so I'm really interested in the integration part that you talk mm -hmm. about, because awesome. I worked as a financial aid administrator. I've worked, as I said, a variety of things that, as, as you say, from the accounting standpoint, it's trying to get the information so that you can crunch the numbers. And so I'm very interested in your awesome. your integration aspect of that. Awesome. Awesome. So that's, that's great. That's great. I would say I know maybe 80% of Adler does it always something new to learn. <laughs> and I'm excited to see everybody new to learn this system too. Good, good, good. Thanks, David. Um, what he says is true as far as like he knows 80%. Often what happens is, is you'll find yourself in a little certain cubbyhole, okay? Or a certain niche. Sherry does payroll, Sherry does expenses and helping this and she'll help do tech support and stuff like that. But if I was like, Sherry, I need you to create four POs with that, 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 she'd be like, <laughs> but even though she's a master user and she could get through it, every single person has their own little niche and that's okay. What we do, and this is a huge, huge, huge concept of Atlas, is if we're going to say the foundation, there are two things that create the entire foundation of Atlas. What do you think they might be? One is permissions. Okay? We don't want the bull in the china shop. Okay? <laughs> bull, you stay out in the corral. Okay? That's very, very important. And there's different mentalities of different people as far as like, I'm a go-getter, I'm a mover and a shaker, and I'm going to sell ice to Eskimos, and the other person's like, whoa, 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 you can't, you know, <laughs> you have to, you have to do that. So that's called permissions. What would the other main underlying piece be? Data. Data is huge. It's going to support data. I think data is very huge. Maybe I should add a third. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I was going to try to looking for is the word settings. Okay. So, how many of you guys in your businesses deal with customers? Okay. Who deals with clients? Who deals with a patient? Possibly, okay. Yeah. Who deals with a student? Okay, so technically those are all your customers. So <clears throat> I would feel really uncomfortable if I was forced into a thing where I had to be like, man, I have to call that a customer. Well, they're actually my associate. You know. Like, so what we do is we basically use a little thing called smoke and mirrors, which is called a setting. We're like, what would you like to call that? <laughs> and so what you would like to call that, who gets to play, supports the data, if, if that makes sense, okay? Those are huge underlying principles. And if they disappeared, you would basically have just a single linear uh, application. But if you say, I'll permission you, I'll let you tweak it, all of a sudden you're like, ah, I don't sell parts, I sell items. I sell SKUs, I sell widgets, I sell... Okay, great, <laughs> name it. <laughs> and then what we do is we cascade that throughout the system. And so basically what it allows you to do is you feel comfortable in your own skin, almost in a way. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a huge piece. Permissions and settings support the entire <coughs> thing. And that is, that is huge, and we will talk more and more about that. Awesome. Mr. Sherry, and just so you know, often when we say Sherry, we will often say Sherry-o. <laughs> Her last name is Olin. <laughs> And I've slaughtered that 50 million times. It's like, are you talking about the same Sherry? <laughs> but Sherry O or Sherry? Mm -hmm. I really need to expand my knowledge in Atlas. Um, I live in a cubby. As Brandon knows, I can tell you how many clicks I can get back to a screen I need to be in. Um, I'm very limited in the purchase order area, inventory area. And for me to be able to be a full team player, I need to expand that knowledge. I know it's there. Um, I'm not scared of it. I just don't touch it. Just mm -hmm. because I work in certain areas, and that kind of restrains me sometimes. So I would prefer to be able to expand my knowledge um, and be useful in every aspect. Awesome. Great. Well, it's similar to what Sherry said. I'm a creature of habit. I do certain things a certain way, and I don't tend to stray off 
the path too far in any other way, so I need to expand my background in these other areas that I just don't go normally to sure. my sure. daily business. So, awesome. Yeah. Both Sherry and Craig, and even David and Steve, often they are helping other clients. And so all of a sudden it might be bank reconciliation time. It might be balance sheet time, hunting for the whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, what, you, what we end up doing is some of these power users that have these skills, what Atlas ends up doing is we get clients, and these clients, just like Ethan said, he's like, hey, I deal on this side of the fence and I push the ball over here. Well, lots of times people need help where they push that ball. And so what we end up doing is we have people who have different skill sets, and we say, permission, Craig, you can now help them with your stuff right here. And then they'll, they'll pay Craig or they'll do whatever. Like it doesn't fall back on us as far as Adel's pro proper, just as far as to do that. But it, it actually creates jobs, it creates opportunities, it creates tons of stuff. So Craig, he drives into our original headquarters type thing, and he might be working for clients, Arkansas and Texas, and <laughs> but he's working in Colorado for these people, and so it, it actually opens up huge options for him to do that kind of stuff. Heather, what would you like to get out of the class? Um, well, I think mostly I'm here to support you. And Atlas has, I used Atlas, um, I use it at the beginning of the year for taxes. Like I just enter our expenses for our family and then our kind of our family business, I guess. So that's why I used Atlas. So I have very limited knowledge of using it, but I, um, I guess I probably know a little bit more than I think I know. <laughs> and um, just Atlas has blessed our family for years now, just helping support our family. So awesome, awesome, great. Shannon, so we got two more, and then we're gonna roll on to a new subject, okay? So we'll kind of wrap up this little discussion, but let's go ahead and go right here. Great, well, I'm basically a non-user of Atlas until <laughs> possibly this last week. I've used it twice. So anything will be a great improvement. So I feel like I will learn so much from this class in any way. Awesome. I hope you guys learn from each other to tell you the honest truth, okay? Like, um, I'll help lead a discussion, but I hope that you chime in, I hope you raise your hand, and I hope you jump in. I want to run it that way, okay? Thanks, Shannon. Uh, just so you know, Shannon is actually helping us with a new project that's coming down the pipeline. I record in notebooks. Like if you look at Ethan's, he's already written a couple pages. Well, often I will be writing, 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 mm -hmm. writing, 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 writing. What did we do? What are the new ideas? Who calls in? We're like, hey, it would be really cool if you. That's one of Atlas's biggest assets. Is literally hundreds of thousands of people have chimed in on this thing. We started the ball, but we are no longer actually making all of the calls. If that makes sense, they're like. You know, it'd be really cool if it doesn't. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> like, just to, for instance, David right here, he used to do expenses. Like, he would go out and he would buy stuff for the car dealership, okay? And then he would add photos to all of these expenses. So we basically had a paperless office so he could actually upload all of his photos and all the documentation. It incredibly shortchanged the, uh, instead of going to the filing cabinet, V, 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 finding it, uh, and sorting through and, like, doing like this, we go like this, with the number that the system gets it, put a little box on it, write the number, scan it into the system, put it in the pile. <laughs> like, this is your filing system because in Atlas, you basically, in order to get back to the V's, guess what you do? Quick search, vendor, doop, doop. oh, recent activity, uh, there we go. Like, and I'm there, I didn't even leave my desk, okay? I have full documentation, full everything is right there. So what I wanted to tell you is, is we had this, this thing we call the quick search. It's pivotal inside of Atlas. This is literally like the vehicle that takes you all over the place, okay? It uh, allows you to jump around. But we had it on one spot. It was on the main homepage. And David kept saying, he's like, I love doing that because that helps me get to where I want to go. But every single time I do it, I have to always go back to the main homepage <coughs> and then I jump from there. Go back to the main homepage, jump from there. Go back to the main homepage. That was his constant process. He's like, is there any way we could put that on like every page? And if you look inside of Atlas now, every single page has that same jump menu type mentality. So you can literally do, 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 vendors, expenses, invoices, 
Once you learn where your pieces are, you literally can jump. It's almost into a sci-fi realm. It, imagine like a, a big sphere, okay? And I, I want you to envision some stuff right here. So like, I'll use my hands and stuff, but if you can envision this, this will help you. Imagine a sphere, okay? Lots of like orbs and tracks and different things like this, okay? And along the way, there are different little substations, okay? There's probably about 12 major substations that you could go to. What this quick search allows you to do is if this is how data is going, this is how business is going, you could literally go, I want to go from here to here. You don't have to go, Ooh. you could just go, doo, 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 doo. like it might sound like really scary, but once you learn how to do it, you're like, oh, this, is, this is how I play. <laughs> like this is, it's a, it's a great thing. But David came up with this little teeny idea. I wish we could do this. And what it ended, ended up happening is we cascade that through the entire system. The entire system now, so it's it's pretty cool. What would you like to get out of the class? Um, I've actually taken some accounting and I've done QuickBooks. In fact, I think Chris was probably my teacher. <laughs> 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 so, um, um, but I, like I said, I have this business and I worked with QuickBooks before, and I've listened so much, and I thought I think Atlas was going to work a whole lot better because. At least when I used to do QuickBooks, I had to trick it to do the things I wanted it to do. And, and so it would be nice to be able to set it up exactly the way I want it with, without having to trick it so that it will do what I'm trying to get it to do. Does it still do that? Does you still have to trick it? Oh, yeah. We tweak, we tweak it. <laughs> oh, tweak it. Excuse me. Ah, sorry. You know, yeah. just as a disclaimer, you still tweak a lot of things, okay? <laughs> Like, um, this, is, this is actually an analogy, and I actually have a little thing that I drew, but uh, are you guys okay if I give you like kind of visualization type models, or, or would you rather see it, like physically see it, see it? I'll draw this one, okay? Uh, this, just, just along the same lines, <coughs> okay, in an ideal world, operations and accounting run parallel, okay? This happens, I automatically know what's going on, I automatically know what's going on, the whole life of its, of its, of its object, right? Here's what really happens in real life, okay? You have your operations and all of a sudden something happens and it leaves that spot for a second, okay? So often on the accounting side, it potentially could leave for a second. If you force everything into this model, guess how much tricking you have to do? Tons. Okay, ideally, this is called static. Perfect, perfect. Static, static, static. Okay? In real life, this is an, an, uh, just a, for example, my sister Shannon, <coughs> she created an invoice for me. I had an invoice, I documented, I paid her. Okay? I had the whole thing. Well, the next time her internet wouldn't work and so she couldn't create me an invoice. All of a sudden, I had to pay her without a supporting piece. I didn't have anything, okay? It happens all the time. So say, for instance, something like this. Say you're, you're going along, and somebody brings some inventory to your shop, and they're looking for a COD payment, okay? They show up at your shop, and they're like, hey, here's your box of widgets and stuff like this. I need a check, and uh, can, you, can you make it snappy? <laughs> Okay? And you're like, oh, just a second, let me open it. You're just like, one, two, three, four, five, da, da, da. you check the packing list. That's all you do. Yes, I'll write you a check. Okay, technically, you don't have the inventory piece in there, okay? That actually is, is, will end up being your PO. But you have to cut the check. What we do in Atlas, if needs be, you can kind of like come back together, like if you need to, rather than like, oh, I forced this check, so let's quick make an entry over here, and then we'll like, it, it, it creates too much of a problem if you lock it into this rigidity. Okay? That's awesome if it, if it could work, but often it doesn't work like that. As long as it comes back together, that's what we kind of do inside of Atlas. I don't know if that helps explain that a little bit.